Now, let's move to the Kronos model. And before I describe the architecture, I just want to talk about the normalization and the quantization because Kronos uses tokens. And to get tokens, you need to quantize the input uh, numbers. So the first step before quantization is normalization. This is a normalized version of the graph I showed you before. Quite simply, I've divided by the interval mean. So I've taken the mean, divided all the points by that. And now the mean of this graph is one. And you can see oscillation about that point. And this is commonly used in training time series models because it means you can use a wide variety of data normalized to train the same model, which means uh, you have much more data to train uh, the same model. So that's normalization. And once we normalize, we then quantize. And this involves uh, splitting the values here into a number of buckets. So here I've split them into 15 buckets from zero to 14. And with this amount of buckets, it looks jagged. Uh, which is good for illustration purposes here, but in practice, you would use many more buckets, often more than 1,000, so that this looks smooth. But the reason for using the buckets or bins is because each of these buckets or bins is now like uh, a piece of vocabulary. It's like one token in your vocabulary. And you can see now the analogy of to a language model. In a language model, you might have uh, a token for each word, but here we've got a token for each of these value buckets. So we're able now to run the model in the same way we would a large language model. We take in the input time series, normalize and quantize it. And now each of these inputs is a token. It'll be a token if there are 15 quantization levels, it'll be a token either zero, a token one, a token three, a token four. And these tokens then, as in a language model, go through an embedding layer and they're converted into vectors. Now here I've only shown three points, but actually there will be an embedding for each of these tokens and each of the embeddings will then be converted through the transformer layer into a transformed embedding. And these transformed embeddings will then be converted uh, into a softmax to give a probability distribution. Well, they'll be subjected to a softmax to give a probability distribution over those uh, buckets or bins. So what this gives us is a probabilistic uh, output for the next step, a probabilistic representation of the next step. Basically, we have these time inputs, they're all in buckets, and we're trying to predict which bucket is the next output going to be in. Is it going to be in bucket one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way up to 14. Then we take this output and we pass it back to the input like this here, and we run forward again. We take that, we run forward again. We take that, we run forward again and again. So you can see this is an autoregressive model because we are constantly calculating the next forecast, bringing it back to the input and calculating the next forecast again.